Michael on us. All right, right now, authorities in Washington state uh, continue their search for a mom. Scaled it back a little bit. Her mom and her eight-year-old son, her name is uh, Shantina Cat Smiley, her son's name, Azriel Carver. They disappeared over the weekend, and their van was found abandoned on a remote beach. This surveillance video is from the night they vanished. Mom told clerk she was lost. So how did her the van end up uh, on a beach? Now we're learning from the fiancé that his fiancé was a recovering alcoholic. And just last week, she relapsed. But he says uh, she would never put her own son at risk. But he can't figure out what happened to them either. It's really bizarre. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep a positive light and a lot of hope in my heart that... You know, I'm going to get that phone call and say we found her safe and sound. She's very intelligent, well-read, well-spoken, elegant, and this, it makes no sense. We'll take your calls on this, one eight seven seven. tell hln your thoughts, your theories on this, always welcome. Joining me to talk about this, Jeremy Pulaski, reporter for the Olympian, uh, has given us the latest. All right, any new leads on this case, Jeremy? Yeah, well, there are a couple things. Uh, today, uh... Thurston County Sheriff's Lieutenant Chris Mealy told me that they are resuming a search today in the area of a uh, little fish trap where uh, the Dodge minivan was found on a uh, Sunday morning. Um, they've got a boat in the water. Um, they've got a scent dog in one of the boats that's in the water to try to pick up any kind of scent that they might have left if they, if they, in fact, they did go into the water. Um, also, they're doing bloodhound searches in, on the roads uh, around that area. So they've picked up the search today, which earlier this morning they had said they canceled the search, but that's changed. Also, um, last night or early this morning, a beachcomber in the area found um, several items that uh, had washed up on the shore, including a wine bottle, an inhaler, and an orange ball. Also, two shoes, um, of two shoes of different sizes. One uh, is a leather shoe about size 13, and the other is also described as a brown leather shoe that could be a, 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 ch a child's shoe. It's mm. a smaller shoe. Now, um, sheriff's deputies don't have any information that these items are connected to Shantina and Azrael, but they do want to talk to Rob Simmons to see if he can verify that, in fact, maybe the items belong to either one of them. But uh, that's that's the latest. The, the sheriff's office um, recovered those items today, and uh, they're trying to get a hold of uh, Mr. Simmons, the fiancé, to see if he can identify, possibly identify the items. Okay, Jeremy, before I get John in, one more to you about this okay, wine bottle found. What do we know about... Uh, Shantina's battle with alcoholism. When did she relapse? What, what do we know about that? Um, I've just been told by sheriff's deputies that she did, in fact, uh, you know, she, that Rob Simmons told them that she did, in fact, relapse uh, recently uh, using alcohol again. But I'm not sure, you know, what kind of bearing that might have on her disappearance. Mm -hmm. um, I know that she was uh, meeting uh, a stepfather that she had lost uh, touch with and hadn't communicated with in some time. Uh, and she was driving down to meet him about an hour south of Olympia, and uh, that there was some anxiety or nervousness in her mind about meeting her stepfather and reconnecting with him. But as far as the alcoholism, I'm, I, I'm not sure that it, that had anything to do with her disappearance. Okay, John uh, Lucich joins us now, former criminal investigator. John, good to have you back. How, how big of a factor is this, that she battled alcohol, relapsed a week ago, and they find a wine bottle near things? Oh, absolutely. Uh, alcoholism, without a doubt, can lead to depression. A lot of things were going on in this woman's life, so they need to find out exactly what frame of mind she was in. One of the places they could really start is taking a look at her computer, seeing what kind of web searches she was doing, if she has a computer, who she was communicating with. Take a look at the activity on her credit cards to find out what she was purchasing, where she was purchasing it, and also take a look at her cell phone to see who she was in contact with in the last hours. All of these things are going to give investigators information about her frame of mind. Okay, you mentioned phone calls. Let's go back to Jeremy. We talk about a timeline. What was the last phone call she made? Was it to her fiance? Was it to her stepfather? Who did she talk to last that we know of? Well, my understanding is that she called a, a, a grandfather in Castle Rock um, around 10 p.m. from a residence um, on 46th Avenue, which is off Boston Harbor Road. And she told her grandfather that she was, she, she forgot her cell phone in the car, so she had to go to a, a, a residence. It's an re affluent residential area, you know, waterfront homes. And she knocked on a door saying that she was lost and asked to use the phone at around 10 p.m. And uh, she, she said that uh, she was lost and that she was going to be late. Um, the neighbors who are the last people to have seen her in Azrael say that she was um, distraught over being lost but I guess no more distraught than anyone would be over being lost. And 
they gave her directions back to the freeway to get back onto Interstate 5 to get an hour south to Castle Rock. Hey, and that's the last time I saw her. Did anybody who saw her say she seemed drunk, smelled alcohol, anything like that? Um, I haven't heard no. alcohol, but uh, there's, she was at a diner about um, an hour before she made that phone call at around 9 o'clock at uh, the Martin Way Diner. And uh, multiple witnesses there said that she uh, seemed a little out of sorts. She ordered a corn dog for her son, and she purchased it, and then left and then just without left it. taking it with her. John. Also, she stumbled in the parking lot, according okay. to... Uh, numerous sources inside the diner may have hurt her knee. John, real quick, how important is this surveillance video going to be when, when we try and piece this together? Oh, it's going to be very important. Every piece of evidence regarding this case is going to be crucial. It's going to give you uh, the, the fact whether this woman was intoxicated, where she was, what type of frame of mind. That video is going to be very, very crucial in the finding out what she was doing at that time. Okay, Jeremy, John, thanks so much. We'll keep following this. It's a bizarre missing persons case for sure. Guys, thanks again. Coming up, was Kaylee Anthony's death an